Hello, friends. This is Professor Gugla. Today's video will be a little unusual, but I'm sure you will like it. So, get comfortable and let's go. Ancient Roman Sword in North America Off the coast of Oak Island in North America, the wreck of a ship, presumably a Roman ship, has been found, and inside the wreck is a Roman ceremonial sword in good condition. The sword was discovered by fishermen decades ago, but the man who found the sword and his son kept the find secret. They feared punishment. Nova Scotia has strict laws against appropriating treasure from shipwrecks. The sword was recently reported by a relative of the fisherman, after his death. That's how the sword came to. The scientists. Skeptics believe that the ancient sword fell into the sea from a ship of a more modern era. But experts have provided evidence to support the hypothesis that the sword was on the island a thousand years ago and that the Romans visited the Americas 1,000 years earlier than Columbus. On the walls of caves in Nova Scotia there are drawings made by the Mi'kmaq, an indigenous people. Scientists believe they depict Roman soldiers with swords and Roman ships. The Mi'kmaq language has 50 terms used by Roman sailors. On Oak Island in Halifax grows Berberus vulgaris, an invasive plant that the Romans used as a condiment and to prevent scurvy during sea voyages. Roman coins from Carthage have been found in the area near Oak Island. Watch further and you will find out what object Roman craftsmen managed to make with the help of nanotechnology, which cannot be repeated even today. The most mysterious boat in the world. Bouvet Island lies in a remote corner of the storm-tossed southern ocean. It's the most isolated spot on the planet. The island is associated with one of the most mysterious seafaring discoveries the ocean has ever presented to humans. In 1964, two ships from South Africa were stranded on the island. The seafarers, with the help of a helicopter, tried to land on the island. A couple minutes after landing, the men found an abandoned dinghy on the island. There were no identification marks on the dinghy, so it was impossible to determine its belonging neither its name nor its home port. Two oars, a barrel of drinking water and a copper tank of decent size were also found not far from the dinghy. Sailors made the assumption of a shipwreck, but a survey of the immediate vicinity was inconclusive no signs of temporary shelters or human remains were found. Since then, a variety of different versions of the origin of the Bouvet Island dinghy have been put forward, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. The most popular of them is the version of natural origin. Everyone knows that for many hundreds of years of ocean exploration, even such giant sea expanses are quite heavily polluted with garbage of anthropogenic origin, and a dinghy lost in the sea is a rather trivial find. And so, all it takes for a dinghy to appear on the shore of an island is time and a lucky coincidence. The Mysterious Stone Egg of Lake Winnipesaukee In 1872, Construction workers were digging a hole for a fence near the shore of Lake Winnipesaukee in New England, USA. They discovered an egg-shaped stone object. They called it the mystery stone because the artifact remains a complete mystery to science. Amateurs and professionals have proposed a variety of theories about the origin of the stone egg, but to this day there is no unanimous opinion. The purpose of this egg is still unknown. It is carved from quartzite, a very hard stone, 10 cm high and 6 cm wide. It weighs 510 grams. The surface of the egg is very smoothly worked and has various drawings and symbols on it. There are also very small holes in the top and bottom of the egg that technologically could have been made with drills, but not in the pre-Columbian era and not before the 19th 20th centuries. It was also impossible to determine which culture the stone belonged to based on the style of processing. The fact is that nothing like it has been found in the new world so far. This style of stone work and drawings is not particularly similar to the style of the Olmecs, nor to the Incas, Aztecs and other pre-Columbian civilizations. An alien skeleton in an Atacama cave. In October 2003, a collector of Native American artifacts named Oscar Munoz was exploring the abandoned Chilean town of Lenoria in the Atacama Desert. He discovered an envelope containing a small humanoid mummy. Its length was about 15 centimeters, externally the find had a good preservation. Even hard teeth were present. Two unusual features stood out. First, it is only nine pairs of ribs, as opposed to the 12 pairs of ribs usual for humans. Second, and more remarkable, was the mummy's severely elongated skull. The egg-headedness gave a resemblance to a classic movie alien. 
For this reason, the find was dubbed the Atacama humanoid. Skeptics claim that it is a moulage and all this is a falsification of the facts, although tomography has shown that it is a real body of a real creature. Opinions among researchers are also divided, but there are hypotheses that perhaps the body belongs to a small-sized monkey or that it is the body of a late-term human fetus. The body of a girl who died 300 years ago who opens her eyes. If you look at the video, which was shot by a parishioner of the Cathedral of Guadalajara, located in Mexico, you can affirmatively say that Saint Innocentia opened her eyes. The story of this saint is a very tragic one. The girl Innocentia was very religious at a very young age and made the decision on her own to embrace the Catholic faith and go to Catholic school. But the girl's father would not have it, and severely punished Innocentia for it. After Innocentia's death, the Catholic Church made her a saint and placed the girl's relics in the Cathedral of Guadalajara. It is the second most populous city in Mexico. One day another miracle occurred. Saint Innocentia opened her eyes and looked at the pilgrim and so it turned out that he was able to photograph and videotape this miracle. No one knows the meaning of this action, but I will assume it is for good and bodes well for Mexico. Noah's Ark was a pyramid. Scientists are constantly trying to find evidence of the Great Flood, the existence of Noah and the Ark that became the receptacle for the beginning of new life on Earth. Recently, new evidence has been found that Noah may have been a pharaoh and the Ark may have been a pyramid. About half a century ago, eight scrolls were found in the Qumran cave, which is near the Dead Sea. The scrolls were discovered by a shepherd and they contain ancient stories that can shed light on some details from the past. Thanks to modern light wave technology, scientists were able to discover that Noah's Ark could have been shaped like a pyramid and this is indicated by a word in one of the scrolls. In addition, Experts point to the Septuagint, which is a Greek version of the Bible and in which the Ark is presented in the shape of a pyramid. These data may prove that Noah was a pharaoh from Egypt, the scientists summarize. Building pyramids by pharaohs in ancient Egypt was a common practice and it is quite possible that Noah could have been one of them. The Dead Sea Scrolls have not been fully studied and there is a possibility that in the future there will be more details and evidence about the reality of the Great Flood and the existence of Noah and his Ark. A Roman bowl made with nanotechnology. The British Museum holds a very beautiful ancient exhibit the Roman Lycurgus Cup. It is famous for its unusual optical properties. In normal light, the goblet appears yellowish-green, but in passing light it acquires a deep wine-red color. It was only in 1990 that scientists managed to unlock the secret of these unique properties. Using an electron microscope, they finally guessed that it was all about the special composition of the glass from which the goblet was made. There were 330 particles of silver and 40 particles of gold per million particles of this glass. And the silver and gold contained in the glass had the size of nanoparticles. Only in this case the glass has the ability to change color, which is observed. Of course, the question immediately arises how were the ancient antique craftsmen able to perform work literally at the molecular level, requiring both the most sophisticated equipment and the highest level of technology. At the same time to reach the level of the ancient masters who made the cup, scientists failed the sensitivity of the plate was a hundred times lower than that of the cup. Well, as I promised, the video was interesting. So, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.